Okay, Patrick, tell us a bit more about this atheism thing. Yeah, Patrick, tell us. Certainly, yes. Well, you see, in, in ancient times, people like you invented stories about various gods creating the earth and mankind because you lacked the scientific knowledge necessary to understand the origins of the universe. But in my day, thanks to scientific progress, we do understand these things, and so it's no longer necessary for us to fool ourselves into thinking that some silly... God created us. But what about all that stuff that defies scientific explanation? Isn't that evidence of God's existence? Yeah, riddle us that, Patrick. Stuff like what? Well, how about the multitude of miracles in the Bible, chief among them the resurrection of our Lord Jesus? Oh, you sweet little simpletons, people don't rise from the dead. Except for that one time Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah, that was awesome. No, what I'm saying is that Jesus never rose from the dead. And how do you know that, Patrick? Because it's not possible for people to rise from the dead. Yeah, we know. That's why it was sort of a big deal when Jesus rose from the dead. Look, I think you're far too uneducated to understand this, but if people could rise from the dead, then people would rise from the dead. If Jesus could rise from the dead, surely someone else would have risen from the dead as well. Other people have risen from the dead. Like who? Like all the people in the Bible who rose from the dead because Jesus rose them from the dead not long before he himself rose from the dead. Well, obviously you can't count those examples. Why not, Patrick? Because they come from the Bible, and the Bible is a ridiculous book full of silly stories that couldn't possibly happen, like... People rising from the dead? Exactly. Right. So according to you, the resurrection doesn't prove the existence of God because it never happened. And we know it never happened because we know that people can't rise from the dead. And we know that people can't rise from the dead because no one ever has risen from the dead if you don't count all the people who have risen from the dead. I think I'm onto your little trick here, Patrick. Yeah, you're a sneaky little secularist, Patrick. So your strategy for proving the non-existence of God is to systematically rule out every piece of evidence for the existence of God solely because that evidence could be used to prove the existence of God. What a perfectly reasonable use of the scientific method, Patrick. Yeah, we'd love to see you employ this strategy in the laboratory, Patrick. Hey, Connell, I just proved that there's no such thing as barium. And how'd you do that, Donald? By throwing out all the samples of barium. I'm surprised more defense attorneys don't attempt this in the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have conclusively proven to you that my client is innocent, as long as you ignore the murder weapon, his confession, and the 400 witnesses who saw him stab that guy in the face. Look, clearly you're not enlightened enough to understand what I... I mean, really, Patrick. By your logic, the first president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, could prove himself to be the best-looking man in the world. All he'd have to do is lock every other male on the planet in his dressing room right before the beauty pageant begins. Oh, no, even then I would still lose. So I may not be a scientist, Patrick. I may not possess your superior intellect and education. I may even be a superstitious Neanderthal who thinks that thunder is what happens when God yells at leprechauns. I think it's the result of a shockwave in the air due to the sudden thermal expansion of plasma in the lightning channel, but that's because I'm stupid. Nonetheless, I still know a lame argument when I hear one. And when you accuse Christians of remaining in ignorance because they refuse to allow any evidence to challenge their theistic worldview, only to dismiss every eyewitness account of our Lord's resurrection solely because it challenges your atheistic worldview, well, that's not just lame. It's also a wee bit of the clover calling the grass green. That's an adorable Celtic twist on a classic idiom, Patrick. Don't be absurd. I treat the Bible exactly the way I treat everything else. I'm a man of reason and evidence and facts. I'm a man of science, a world-renowned evolutionary biologist. I defy you to give me one example of something that I believe in despite no scientist ever having seen it happen. Evolution. Dang it. <laughs> But really, have you actually read your holy book? Your god is a heartless, hateful, murderous ogre. There's no reason to believe in such a vile deity. I'm sorry, Patrick. I'm going to need a second to recover from that. Yeah, Patrick, stop in the name of logic before you break my brain. Placing your failure to properly understand the justice of the Almighty aside for a moment, did you honestly just argue that God doesn't exist because he's mean? Why, if being a jerk made you cease to exist, then every war in human history would have been over the second it started. Rosie O'Donnell would have disappeared in a puff of smoke in 1998 instead of getting fired from The View once every seven minutes. And that jerk who makes those Lutheran satire videos wouldn't even be able to finish recording.